In this video, you will understand more about the model component that was added in the previous video. As the MVC application needs to be able to call methods and access data from the model component, we'll also link the MVC application to the model. By doing so, you will also understand what such a linking actually entails. For our chocolate store application to deliver any value to its users, it needs to have access to useful data. Here, the data is about the chocolate products that the catalog intends to show. The model component that you added as a dependency earlier happens to have code to read and write to an in-memory database. It also initializes the database with some sample products so that we don't start with an empty catalog. Let's look at how that works. Open the chocolate store model project and navigate to the SRC main resources meta inf spring folder. Notice the file database.properties. This lists the connection information for the in-memory HSQL database. While this is not a production grade database, it's perfect for our purpose of learning Spring MVC because you don't need to install an RDBMS system. The database binaries are included as a Maven dependency and it just works without any other setup requirement. However, if you happen to prefer any other database, maybe a database you already installed, make changes to the connection parameters in this database.properties file and add the necessary drivers as Maven dependencies to the project. And you should be all set. Let's look at the data model. There is a table called product, which contains the individual product information. There's a category table that contains product categories. Every product can belong to a category. For example, truffles is a category, and dark chocolate truffle and almond truffle are products which belong to that category. There is a table for users, which contain user information for all those who have registered on the site. There is a purchase table that contains purchases made on the app. Each purchase consists of a set of purchase items which is a record of the product and the quantity of the product that's purchased. Now that you've seen the data model, let's look at how this data is read by the application. The chocolate store model app uses Spring and Hibernate to connect to the database and access the data. There are entity classes for each of the tables that we just saw. To support the various operations on the data, we have data access objects or DAOs and business services defined for each entity. For example, for the product entity, we have a product DAO and a product service implementation. The service declares various methods like get products, save product, add product, and so on. The DAO contains code which uses the database to implement these methods. All these are brought together by the Spring framework. In the Chocolate Store model project, navigate to the SRC main resources meta inf spring application context.xml. This is the spring application context configuration. Notice some of the beans configured here. There's an entry for data source that connects to the database using the values in db.properties file we saw earlier. There's also hibernate and transaction configuration. Notice the JDBC colon initialize database tag. This runs a database script that contains a few insert statements to provide us with some sample product data every time we start the application. All this configuration is in the application context.xml. The spring container refers to this XML for information on all the declared beans. It then initializes the beans as per the configuration. Once it does that, all the necessary connections, transactions, and database interactions are taken care of. There is one problem here. Now we have prepared the chocolate store model project with the necessary Spring configuration. And we've added this module to our main Spring MVC project, Spring Chocolate Store. But if we run this project now, the Spring MVC application will have no idea about the configuration and beans that we have provided in the artifact. The artifact does get bundled in the web app, but Spring just doesn't see it yet. There is one more step to be done to make it aware of the model we've added. When the Spring container 
of our MVC application starts up, it refers to a specific set of locations and files to know what to initialize. It looks at those files only, irrespective of whatever other configuration files we've added to the application. In the Spring Tool Suite, navigate to the SRC main web app webinf spring root context.xml. This is the file that the Spring container of the MVC application refers to. We will understand why Spring looks at this file later in this section, but for now, know that this file will have all the Spring beans and configurations that you need in your Spring MVC application. As you can see, this file is pretty much empty now. We need to add the model configuration that's included in the jar at metainf spring application context.xml. You can import an existing XML configuration into another XML by using the import tag with the name of the XML. Since the XML is in a jar that's bundled with the app, the file will be in the class path, hence the class path reference in front of the actual path. Now the Spring container knows that there is another config file that it needs to refer to and it does initialize the model configuration when the application initializes. One thing to note here, the model doesn't necessarily have to be a Spring component as has been implemented here. You can use any Java technology to build your business services. For example, you can write a module that uses JDBC to interface with the database and not use any Spring or Hibernate technologies at all. Such a module would work just as well here. The idea here is to have the MVC code be able to call methods of your business service. Using Spring for both provides a seamless integration, but Spring MVC will work with other choices of business service implementations too. In this video, you've examined and understood the model elements that you will use in the application, and you updated the Spring MVC application to include the Spring configuration in the model artifact. In the next video, you will use the integrated model to make a call from the controller to the model.